Hello everyone, I'm Captain Logan. And I'm Brandon. And today we're going to tell you how we felt about Labor Day. Kind of an odd pick for us to review this week. Uh, I'm doing a uh, series right now with uh, Aaron Dicer over on his channel. Quick plug for him. Uh, I do a series with him called, uh, every other Monday, called uh, The Critic, The Geek, and The Girl. I'm the geek in that show. And uh, this no way. week, yes. And uh, oh, wow. th th this week he chose uh, Labor Day for us to, to review over on his channel. So uh, you can go check that out. By the time they get, this gets up, that will likely to have already been uh, been posted. Um, mm -hmm. That show, uh, again, quick plug, is live every other Monday at uh, I, I think two in the afternoon. Uh, so anyway, uh, we went and saw that. It wasn't a lot that came out this week, right. and um, so uh, th th this is the one we saw. Um, interesting though, and I'll talk about this a little bit later. That uh, this movie has a whole lot of uh, superhero alum, and, uh, <laughs> yes. and, we'll, and we'll talk about that. So so anyway, uh, this is a very very simple film set in 1987 about a uh, convict who gets. Uh, who escapes from prison and finds and, and, we'll, and we'll talk about uh, the way this happens but uh, he he uh, gets a ride from a woman and her son she is a single mother uh, back to their house uh, it, it, it's kind it's kind of a are they on a farm it's kind of a farmhouse type it's kind of a farmhouse but they're surrounded by a wooded area yeah and uh, anyway so uh, they're they're out in um, kind of the, the kind of the boonies and I uh, and and she's small town in America it's a small town yeah and it's so um, out. So uh, she's she's hiding him out, and um, this boy is uh, all conflicted about his parents splitting up and things, looking for a father figure. And anyway, it is a uh, romance uh, set around these two people falling in love while this guy is on the run from the law. That's the movie. Uh, Brandon, how did you feel about Labor Day? How did I feel about Labor Day? I felt like using the third day in my three-day weekend to sleep in. Nothing special to see or do. That's kind of how this movie panned out for me. I wasn't especially surprised. It was better than I thought it was going to be, but uh, it kind of it had all the all the same things I see. And I, I don't watch a lot of movies like this just because I've seen a couple and it, they fall into the same category. Sure. It was uh, <clears throat> it was solid acting. I wouldn't say it was great acting, but it wasn't bad acting by any stretch of the imagination. I'm going to say that something that I really liked about this movie. Well, it's probably Josh Brolin's character. Yep. I kind of, I kind of got behind him and kind of what he was, what he was all about. I didn't really like any of the backstory they they kept flashing back to about that. But his character, while not especially fleshed out, I would say it was. A, it, I felt like it was a. The character was there and it was solid. There wasn't a much about his character necessarily that really threw me for a curve. Uh, something that I didn't like about this movie, uh, there's a scene in here where they just stretch things out way too darn much and it really just fell apart at that point. Uh, we talked about that a little bit. It, it just gets stretched for, they're, they're going for suspense and it fell totally flat. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, I'm going to say I'm not feeling it. If you want to see it, get it on a video when it comes to Redbox. Yeah. Uh, okay, Brandon, this movie made me feel an uh, antsy and impatient. Antsy mm. and impatient. Uh, there is not enough movie here for how long the film is. Mm -hmm. And once, what's more, it's built on a faulty premise. Uh, the, the, the thing opens with <clears throat> the with uh, this this uh, woman and her son going to the grocery store, and uh, this woman barely ever le leaves her house mm. uh, because of some horrible things that happened in the past, and uh that that I uh, have everything to do with uh, having children, and uh, she's so she's kind of scared of the world now, mm -hmm. and uh, so she, so uh, she and her uh, she and her uh, son go to the grocery store together like once a month, and so they're at the grocery store, and this uh, convict Josh Brolin has escaped from prison, and and uh, convinces them in the middle of this grocery store, kind of kind of threatens them and scares them into taking them back to their house, and I'm like. It's in the middle of the day, and mm -hmm. you're in the middle of a public place. You're not, like, 
and with freaking his, out or something. As, as I, afraid as she is, you'd expect her to kind of freak out. Yeah, and there's a <laughs> lot of that kind of stuff in this movie. Um, there, there's there's a lot of stuff in this that um, that I found uh, not especially plausible or mm -hmm. not especially likely in the way uh, in the way people are interacting in this. Uh, not to mention the fact that I I found the characters mostly pretty typical. Yeah. Uh, there are definitely some stereotypes in this movie. Um, Josh Brolin, I feel like they're they're trying really really hard to make me like this guy, to make him interesting, but unfortunately, it, 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 it watches a lot like somebody just hasn't, isn't well read enough to, to write this material. That, I, gotcha. that's, I felt, I feel like most of the problems in this, in this movie are at the script level. Mm -hmm. um, I, the, the acting, okay. Yeah. Uh, Brolin's fine. Kate Winslet is fine. She, honestly, I think her performance is probably the best in the film. Um, she, okay. she, she's fine. The kid's quite good. Uh, the kid. I'll is, be interested um, to see him in more things. Uh, what what is what is the kid in this? Uh, what is his name? Henry uh, um, Gatlin. Griffith. Gatlin Griffith. Yeah, I thought I, it sounds like a superhero name. Um, I, I thought I thought he I thought he was quite good. Um, but yeah, most of the cast of Spider Man's in here. I'd say yeah, and, and then uh, well, and, and, and then of course you've got uh, you've got Tobey Maguire as the older version of him. Uh, this kid basically uh, grows up and becomes Tobey Maguire, and the <laughs> and uh, and uh, Tobey Maguire uh, isn't it fitting that he's narrating through the whole movie? Uh, yeah. How much <laughs> were we constantly in Spider Man saying, dude, seriously, quit oh, narrating? Oh my goodness, that was. And, Hilarious. And uh, it, honestly, the movie lost me right at we got we've got uh, Tobey Maguire narrating this whole movie. Uh, the narration's not necessary. Most of the flashbacks are not necessary, and most of what's here is uh, really I gotta say kind of trite. Uh, there, yeah. There's there's some stuff here and there that uh, that kind of got me that I thought was was, was sort of okay. Um, I I kind of I was kind of cool with the with the uh, pie baking thing. It took forever. Yeah, uh, they drew that out way too long too. But. There, there, there's a lot of there's a lot of drawn stuff out, um, but like but like the. <clears throat> There's some photography that's kind of nice. Uh, I think if I if I had to if I had to jump onto a favorite thing here, it's probably I don't want to say, say cinematography because it's not great, but photography, scenery. Sure. There's, there, there's some there's some nice there's some nice. The scene with the river was interesting. There's some, yeah, there's some interesting shots here and there. There's there's sparks of artistic. Um, I don't want to say genius, but intelligence in in, in places here. Uh, but like I said, you know you know lots of cliches. One of the big one I wanted to mention was was um the the uh, the uh, Brilliant genius kid. We've got that in here. Mm. That's got to be in there. Um, and and then also you've got uh, two stories kind of in conflict with each other. Sure. Uh, and I feel like <clears throat> they could have been married, uh, but I don't feel like it, the, the the movie marries them very well. Uh, you've right. got you've got two classic major uh, uh, regular story foundations. One of them is the stranger uh, that that shows up in someone's life and that they don't know but changes everything for them. And you okay. have the uh, coming of age story for the kid. The movie can't decide which of those is most important, and it's constantly yeah. at each other's a a a throat when when those two things should be blended. I'm not saying you can't do both of those stories together, but, but they, the they stranger two thing separate things. should have been more in the background. I can't decide if this is a romance or if this is a story about a kid dealing with the difficulties of growing up with a broken home. I don't know yeah. which of those. As I said, it could do both. I don't think it's doing both. Uh, that is my uh, that is my uh, most difficult thing with the movie. Sure. Is, 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 is it's it's uh, in ineffectiveness at blending those two things. Ultimately, not feeling it on this. Not horrible. Uh, it's got its moments. There's a few things here and there. Um, Brandon, one of the things that I that I also thought was a little weird mm -hmm. is uh, did this movie have to be set in 1987? I don't think it did. Uh, yeah. By any stretch of the imagination, it was only so that when we found out Tobey Maguire's character got older we didn't have to set that in the future i feel like that i also they, don't feel like that ending was necessary right it was uh, not uh this this movie is full of cheese all over the place yeah um, uh, you know a little bit here or or stuff that's just starting to encroach on cheese that's the thing is yeah. that it's a little awkward there's places where i can see what they're trying to do and they just now, don't well, quite achieve it something that we talked about while i didn't necessarily have a problem where they called attention to the name of the film inside the film yeah. it was how they did that and sure. i think that this film was not aptly named i i didn't care for the title of labor day especially seeing with the previews and i i'm going to do kind of the same thing you do I, i'm not trying to judge a movie based on the pre previews necessarily or to to review a movie based on previews, but yeah. I didn't get a sense for what this was about at all beforehand, and Labor Day just threw me off even more completely. I didn't realize it was taking place over a holiday weekend. 
it's 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 a it, it's an awkward title, uh, which is fitting because there's a lot of awkwardness <laughs> in this. Uh, the the granted, it, you're 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 gonna make a movie that uh, every now and again is going to give you a text stamp to let you know what day of the week it is, and <laughs> and uh, and that, and that's okay. We're seeing the I, I I get why it's doing that. It's not a big deal. We're we're we're, see, we're seeing uh, these people's relationships uh, growing and blossoming and changing over this period of time. Mm-hmm. We need to know what day of the week it is. Fine, right? But you're gonna call the movie Labor Day, and the whole thing takes place over a weekend. It's a little weird. Uh, Labor Day weekend would have even been a better title. Uh, I still a stupid title, but it, <laughs> yes, that uh, sounds more like the, a yeah. National Lampoon movie. <laughs> yeah, really Labor does. Day weekend. Yeah, National Lampoon's Labor Day weekend. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, sale. The Griswold the, family. The, the, di- the difficulty uh, with... Uh, the, the, yeah, the big di- difficulty I have with the title is I feel like somehow or rather it's it's maybe relying on the title to sell itself. Just because it's like, it's like well, we have a lot of holiday titles mm. and here's one that nobody's pulled out of a hat yet and really used. So. Because they, they weren't telling us a lot of... That now, granted, this takes place. It's mostly just the three characters: Josh Brolin, Kate Winslet, and this kid, and kid uh, right. Griffith. But they're not selling you the fact that Tobey Maguire's in it, or no. the, any of the other That's people who point. end up being in it. So they really have to try to sell it some other way. Yeah. Well, and, and of course they could do that. Uh, honestly, I'm not even talking about how they're like trying to sell the film. So much as maybe a movie called Labor Day, people will see because it's a holiday they're familiar with. Well, here's what's in- interesting. I got the idea that maybe they might have been talking about the birth of a kid when I was seeing the previews. Yeah, and then sure. we do get something about births inside the movie that seemed entirely over the top. The movie does deal a lot with the different stages of life, mm-hmm. right? Uh, yes. But again, that's the thing that's in conflict with, I think. I, that, that, that it, it's it's wanting to it's wanting to do that. It's it's wanting to be. There's a lot of puberty in this. There's a lot of there's a lot of the the weirdness of the potential weirdness. I, I don't want to speak for everybody. The potential weirdness of a uh, a kid about to go through puberty, living alone with his mom. You know, you know that, that, that kind of stuff. And it, it's there's, very awkward there. But also, there, but what, but what I was going to say real oh, quick. sorry. Yeah. Is is that's there, but then at the same time, there's also a whole lot of of stuff that's not blending well with that about uh, about families and uh, leaving children behind. And I just don't feel like those things are ever quite coming together, right? Like they're not. It's not very cohesive. And my big question to you, Brandon, is. Uh-huh. Thematically, what is the title doing? And I don't mean that that, that titles must always do something thematic. I, I don't mean that. It's just that what was the significance exactly of this taking place over Labor Day weekend? Perhaps another viewing, I, I would I would come up with it. What? But it didn't seem especially clear to me. Um, besides the fact that I mean, I, I could I could stretch it. I could I could reach I, for things. I can that, stretch it in this way. There's a there's a line where they talk about the fact that he's waiting for the trains to start operating so he can hitch a ride. Right. And then she mentions, oh, it's a holiday. But that's holiday just a weekend. matter of, it, of convenience for the it, story to it, keep him it there, is. right? Uh, like, the name of the movie is what, kind of... Is there any importance uh, to the fact that it's Labor Day over, over Martin Luther King weekend or anything right. else, right? No, like, there's you know, not. You know, like, like this movie could have just as easily been Martin Luther King Day or <laughs> or it could have been, well, uh, you know... I was going to add, though, to the... Mother's I'm, Day. It could have been anything, The fact right? that like, this was less cohesive, as, as you were talking about, yeah. let's not forget uh, the guy who plays uh, Agent Coulson was also in this as the estranged father. Yeah. That didn't really jive because he left the one family to integrate himself into a new family, the secretary. Right. That's mentioned in the previews. He left to go to be the secretary, but she's got a pre-existing kid Mm -hmm. who doesn't really accept him either. Right. And they were, I felt like they might have been trying to do something there, like, but they just fell flat. And then when he tries to reconnect with his kid, his kid says it best, oh, we were having such a good time not talking. Right. Well, what what, ha- what happens is, uh, I, again, I see what they, I see what they're trying to do. Right. It's just that his character and I, they was, never came was, together. It's weird, it's weird that he's in this, but but, but <laughs> yeah. that that that, uh, that his character uh, is is trading one family for another because yes, the new family has a woman about the same age and a kid. And but here's the thing, okay? I actually don't think that's the problem. I think it's just I think it's just the fact that his character is so oversimplified and he's kind mm. of thrown under the bus. It's like it's like th- it's like this guy couldn't handle uh, his his wife's um, uh, personal. 
physical problems with the difficulties going on with her own body, and so he had to leave. Um, you could have made me appreciate him for the difficulty of that situation, right. but ultimately, he seems like he's just kind of a loser and kind of a slacker. And, and, and he just and, wanted to get away from it instead of deal with yeah, it. Yeah, and so what he does is he trades up uh, a family, his family, with one that looks, that is similar to that. He's got a woman about the same age, uh, he's got it, she, she's also um, kind of kind of soft-spoken, a little reserved, just like his previous wife. You've got um, another kid that's about the same age. Uh, all of that kind of stuff. And so uh, and, and so he's trading up. Again, these kinds of things happen all the time. There are a lot of glimmers of truth in this, but they, it, the whole situation feels incredibly manufactured. Yeah. And, and that's, they, they at deal, the end of the day, why the film doesn't yeah. work for me. Right, and they deal a lot with the stereotypes in these types of situations. There's not one situation that's similar to this that has all of these things bundled into one thing. They've all got parts, but they try to just... I, I, the word you use, manufacture, that's a good one. They manufacture the situation that seems more full of stereotypes than it really should be. Yeah, and uh, it's trying really hard to be... Uh, intelligent about the human condition, about how people um, act in difficult situations, and uh, it, it it tries to tell the audience what it thinks people are like by having people mm. do things in situations that, for the that in the context of the situation they're giving me, it doesn't feel like the character is a full blown real person that is making these choices so much as your your uh, your script says. Uh, this is what people are like, and so they are like that. Exactly. Uh, so, yeah. Well, uh, ultimately, the, I've got nothing else to say about it. Well, yeah. e except, let me mention real quick a couple yes, other um, actor things. Uh, J.K. Simmons is in this for a minute, um, the guy who played Jameson in Spider-Man. Uh, he's he's kind of wasted. Uh, I felt mm. like... Um, mm. I, I, I felt like... Uh, he's an interrupt in this movie. Yeah, and I mean, like, like I get I get the, the scene's okay, but I'm just saying that, like, he, he, he is an actor. Right. He's fine, but he's kind of wasted in, in, in it. Uh, there's a lot of that, right? Um, you know, you know I, I, frankly, Indeed. I don't think the caliber of actors that are in this, they really need it. You, no, you that's know? true. Yeah, that's absolutely true, and I'm, I'm kind of wondering the why they would really have signed does, on to this The project. one thing that really does elevate it is, is some of the acting. <laughs> Indeed. You know, so well, anyway. in the end, I'm not feeling it. Well, uh, everybody, thanks so much for watching, and we will review a new movie for you next week. Lots of uh, fun, fun uh, stuff coming up that uh, we're both very excited Ooh, about yeah. getting to review. Uh, we got Lego Movie coming up pretty quick, and That's I gonna be have awesome. been really excited about that. So we're gonna go see that. I might go twice if it's as good as it looks like it might be. <laughs> and right. um, obviously, I don't right. want to judge things before they come out, but that looks like so much fun. And uh, really hoping for good things from the Robocop reboot. Uh, one of those things that I'm kinda, looking forward to. Kind of wish they weren't doing, but at the same time, could be great. So let's see. And now here's the that, thing. That'll be fun to go do. Uh, just just on that note, yeah. they could go either way, and I'd still be okay. If they took it seriously, I'd be okay with it. If they went full cheese, I'd be okay with that. Oh too. yeah, no, no, it could, it could work either way, and it's one of those things where I, I don't want it to be exactly the same thing. We have that already, right? Um, but at the same time, you just you know you you, you want them to validate its existence, exactly. if nothing else. Um, I'm pretty excited about seeing Michael Keaton in something again. It's been a long time since I've seen Michael Keaton in anything. <laughs> Excuse me, and, and one Gary of my favorite Oldman actors. Too. Uh, and Gary Oldman's in everything these days, yeah. and of course <laughs> I always like him. But I, I'm just saying that Bankable. Michael Keaton, that's, that's an exciting That's a good get. one, so, yes, yeah. absolutely. Uh, anyway, thanks again, everybody. Sure appreciate it. Uh, we'll see you next time. I'm Captain Logan. And I'm Brandon.